Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for June 30th. And I'm reading Psalms 86 to 89 today. Nothing more important than the Word of God. It is our source for truth, stability, sanity, wisdom, hope. I commend you for being here and getting in your, your Word every day. This is our source of life. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to reveal yourself to us by your Spirit. Teach us your Word. Come alongside us by your Spirit. And show us, Lord, show us what you want us to know out of this word today. Open our eyes of understanding and the knowledge of you. Open our eyes and show us great and wonderful things from your law, according to Psalm 119. In Jesus' name. Psalm 86, a prayer by David. Hear, Yahweh, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am godly. You, my God, save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to the soul of your servant, for to you, Lord, do I lift up my soul. Now, I already want to stop. I love that part that says, I call to you all day long. I kind of do have this continuous all day long conversation going with the Lord. I have an awareness of him with me. I think that's a great way to um, walk out of carnality. You know, the Bible says that um, to walk in the spirit and to not walk according to our flesh, not walk in that kind of like blindness of our carnality, but walk in that awareness of him, walk lockstep with the spirit. And so that's what I think of when it says, I call to you all day long. It's this day long conversation and awareness of him being with us all day, because the Bible says, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but he would give his spirit to be with us and help us and comfort us. So it says, bring joy to the soul of your servant. See, and it says, for to you, Lord, do I lift up my soul. So as we do that throughout the day, there truly is a joy that, that begins to bubble up out of our spirit. Verse 5, for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive, abundant and loving kindness to all those who call on you. Hear, Yahweh, my prayer. Listen to the voice of my petitions. So this is kind of what I do all day long. When things come up, they, they turned into a prayer. Or I acknowledge, like, what does the word say about this? And quote a scripture related to that situation. Um, <clears throat> for example, something small, well, not really that minor. Um, I've had some food reactions, some food allergies. And I don't like that. But there's a verse in Exodus that says, He will bless our food and water and take all sickness from our midst. So there's a... a you know, a, a sickness related to food that he said he'll deal with as we call to him and trust him and lean on his word. Verse seven, in the day of my trouble, I will call on you for you will answer me. There is no one like you among the gods, Lord, nor any deeds like your deeds. All nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They shall glorify your name for you are great and do wondrous things. You are God alone. Teach me your way, Yahweh. I will walk in your truth. Make your heart undivided, excuse me, make my heart undivided to fear your name. I will praise you, Lord, my God, with my whole heart. I will glorify your name forevermore. For your loving kindness is great toward me. You have delivered my soul from the lowest sheol. God, the proud have risen up against me. A company of violent men have sought after my soul, and they don't hold regard for you before them. But you, Lord, are merciful and gracious God slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the son of your servant. Show me a sign of your goodness that those who hate me may see it and be shamed because of you, Yahweh. No, because you, Yahweh, have helped me and comforted me. Psalm 87, a psalm by the sons of Korah, a song. His foundation is in the holy mountains. Yahweh loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken about you, city of God, Selah. I will record Rahab, which the footnote says is Egypt. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me. Behold Philistia, Tyre, and also Ethiopia. This one was born there. Yes, of Zion it will be said, this one and that one was born in her. The Most High himself will establish her. Yahweh will count when he writes up the peoples. This one was born there. Selah. Those who sing as well as those who dance say, All my springs are in you. 
Now, who is it referring to when it says this one was born there? Anybody know that? It says it twice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Psalm 88. A song, a psalm by the sons of Korah for the chief musician to the tune of the suffering of affliction, a contemplation by Heman the Ezraite. Yahweh, the God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Turn your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles. My life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like a man who has no help, set apart among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more. They are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have afflicted me with all your waves. Selah. You've taken my friends from me. You have made an abomination, made me an abomination to them. I am confined and I can't escape. My eyes are dim from grief. I have called on you daily, Yahweh. I have spread out my hands to you. Do you show wonders to the dead? Do the departed spirits rise up and praise you? Selah. Is your loving kindness declared in the grave or your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders made known in the dark or your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But to you, Yahweh, I have cried. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Yahweh, why do you reject my soul? Why do you hide your face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer your terrors, I am distracted. Your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They came around me like water all day long. They completely engulfed me. You have put lover and friend far from me and my friends into darkness. Psalm 89, a contemplation by Ethan, the Ezraite. I will sing of the loving kindness of Yahweh forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. I indeed declare love stands firm forever. You establish the heavens. Your faithfulness is in them. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build up your throne to all generations. Selah. The heavens will praise your wonders, Yahweh, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to Yahweh? Who among the sons of the heavenly beings is like Yahweh? Now, that's an interesting one. It's talking about sons of heavenly beings. Who, let me back up verse six. Who in the skies can be compared to Yahweh? Who among the sons of heavenly beings is like Yahweh? And then it talks about the council of the holy ones and the God of armies. I'm just scrolling down here. So that is interesting. I'm not saying I understand what it means, but it's referring to these non-human entities, to put it that way. Um, you know, you just you, the church hasn't always talked a whole lot about this council of God or these other beings. We talk about angels. We might talk about cherubs or even the archangel Michael and Gabriel, which, by the way, are the only two archangels mentioned in the Bible. Um, <clears throat> but we don't always talk about some of these other beings that are mentioned. So let me go back to verse six and you can listen for this. For who in the, okay, one more thing. So, because remember, there were other gods being worshipped and they were connected to these spiritual entities, right? Satan likes to be, these were false gods, idols, but they weren't, they weren't just mere, they weren't just the, um, the clay or the wooden statues and such that they made. They were connected spiritually to these evil entities, right? Okay, so verse six, who in the skies can be compared to you, Yahweh? Who among the sons of heavenly beings is like Yahweh? The very awesome God in the council of the holy ones to be feared above all those who are around him. Yahweh, God of armies, who is a mighty one like you. Yah, your faithfulness is around you. You rule the pride of the sea. When its waves rise up, you calm them. You have broken Rahab in pieces like one of the slain. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. 
the heavens are yours. The earth's earth also is yours, the world in its fullness. You have founded them. You have created the north and the south. Tabor and Hemon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, your hand is strong, and your right hand is exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. I love that one. It's one of my old memory verses. Loving kindness and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who learn to acclaim you. They walk in the light of your presence, Yahweh. See, they walk with him in the light of your presence. That's beautiful. So this was a continual war. You have to kind of get in the mindset. These these are ancient documents. This is, how did they think back then? How did they live? Very differently than us. <clears throat> they were constantly defending themselves. And the people of Israel, who God, creator God, the, the one true and only living God, created them to reveal himself through and to demonstrate himself and to bring the Messiah through. So there's just constant war going on with these other deities that want to be God, so-called deities. And, um, you know, this war in the heavenlies is satanic war. And um, so these songs would exalt God and reaffirm their commitment to him. You know, he said, you shall worship the Lord your God in him only. And they're reaffirming their commitment and extolling him. You know, you, we're not going to worship those gods. We're going to worship you alone. So um, that's what I'm seeing here. Feel free to comment your thoughts. For you are the glory, verse 17, you are the glory of their strength. In your favor, our horn will be exalted. For our shield belongs to Yahweh, our king, to the Holy One of Israel. Then you spoke in vision to your saints and said, I have given strength to the warrior. I have exalted a young man from the people. I have found David, my servant. I have anointed him with my holy oil, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm will also strengthen him. No enemy will tax him. No wicked man will oppress him. I will beat down his adversaries before him and strike those who hate him. And that's exactly what happened. Um, verse 24, but my faithfulness and my loving kindness will be with him. In my name, his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand also on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He will call to me. You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will also appoint him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. I will keep my loving kindness for him forevermore. My covenant will stand firm with him. I will also make his offspring endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and don't walk in my ordinances, if they break my statutes and don't keep my commandments, then I will punish their sin with the rod and their iniquity with the stripes. But I will not completely take my loving kindness from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. I will not break my covenant, nor alter what my lips have uttered. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His offspring will endure forever. His throne like the sun before me. Wow. It will be established forever like the moon, the faithful witness of the sky. Selah. But you have rejected and spurned. You have been angry with your anointed. You have renounced the covenant of your servant. You have defiled his crown in the dust. You have broken down all his hedges. You have brought his strongholds to ruin. All who pass by the way rob him. He has become a reproach to his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You have made all of his enemies rejoice. See, now, it's so important to stay in tune with the Lord and understand kind of what he's doing and, and stay on his side, right? <laughs> I mean, there were people that, that turned against David and, you know, he had political enemies and he had other people who would talk against him or mumble against him. David was far from perfect, but God was using him to establish Israel and bring uh, some years of peace so that Solomon could build the temple and other things. And um, so it was a good idea to be on God's side of what was what was going on in their thoughts, words, and deeds, and not opposed to him. Verse 44, you have ended his splendor and thrown his throne to the ground. You have shortened the days of his youth. You have covered him with shame. Selah. How long, Yahweh, will you hide yourself forever? Will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is, for what vanity you have created all the children of men. What man is he who shall live and not see death? Who shall deliver his soul from the power of Sheol? Selah. Lord, where are your former loving kindnesses, which you swore to David in your faithfulness? Remember, Lord, the reproach of your servants, how I bear in my heart the taunts of all the mighty peoples with which your enemies have mocked Yahweh with which they have mocked the footsteps of your anointed one. 
Blessed be Yahweh forevermore. Amen and amen. Well, that's the end of today's reading. Please feel free to comment your thoughts. Check the description for some helpful links, including the uh, Psalms overview video and also the link for your or the email for the free one year Bible. Till next time, God bless you.